Hello and welcome back to Advancing Spark. So, I did a video recently where I talked about the new 7.2 beta release and how it had this weird cloning thing for Deltron Databricks. So, I thought this video I'd take a bit of a deeper dive. So we talked about the theory, what's a shallow clone, what's a deep clone, but we had loads of questions of people saying, well, how many files are copied over? What actually happens with that shallow clone? How does it work after the fact? So I thought I'd actually try it out, have a bit of a tinker, and kind of see what we can shed a light on. So if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and any questions, put them down below. All right. Okay, so I have here a notebook I've gotten ready to kind of just create a delta table, something for us to work with. So I'm working in my lab. So I've got a delta leg set up. I've got a lab folder. So we're sitting in our root lab folder. And then I don't have a clone folder yet. So plan is coming in here, creating a table. So this is just a real straightforward um, delta table. This is what I use to kind of explain how optimize and vacuum works to people in the training. So just thought I'd use that for this. So creating a table, we're giving it a structure, I'm not doing anything particularly fancy in here. I'm saying use the delta format. So it's gonna create a delta log, but that's it. I'm not gonna do anything else. So it's just a blank table with a delta log gonna be in this address. So we should see that in our clones folder. No idea why this is taking so long, but it'll take a moment to think about what it's doing. So when we see that, uh, we should be able to go in here and we'll just see this clones folder appear when that's run. And then we'll have an empty place and we can go and do some stuff. Next, I'm gonna go and insert a load of SQL. So I've got like sort of three real basic sample records just to seed it with that little bit of starting data. Okay, so that's now run. So we should have our basic clone table. There we go, so I've got a clones folder in my lab, which I quite like. Uh, I've got addresses, no data in there yet. And I've got my delta log just saying, create a blank table. Good starting point, we can go from there. So I'm gonna run this little insert job. So we can go off, run our three records, get those in. And then again, so I'm doing this all through Hive. So I'm using the SQL interface for everything. This is a SQL notebook, which is quite rare for me. Um, but we can see it there. So I've got three different uh, things. We can go and say what's going on in there. Bit of parquet. But I've got four parquet for my three records. One is a small dummy one, but okay. And I've got my delta log saying data there. Okay, so I've got some basic data in my delta table, we can start working with that. So what do we want to do? So first things first, one of the big questions we had is what happens if the data's changed? Do we take over all the data, just the history? How does that actually work? So let's make a bit of a change. So I'm just going to go and update our table. And what do we want to do? We want to set our effective date for our clones, which is a bit weird, but okay, to 2020, oh, Let's just do that. I uh, might need to wrap that in a string just to see how happy it is. Okay, seems happy with that. So we've run an update and we do a quick, let's see what happened. So we should see, there we go, so I've got my new effective date. Okay, just took a start of it. Well, fine. Um, and we've got a load of new parquet files. So essentially in our delta, in our transaction log, it'd be like, I've invalidated those files. I've added some new files and that's all completely standard delta so far. So have a look, there we go, I've removed, removed uh, four files, I've added three files, so that's my current state. So we'll know when we clone this table, when we, if we do a deep clone, it should only take those three current ones over, it won't take all seven files. We can go and test it out and just say, is deep taking history or not? Uh, but first, have a look at the shallow clone. So let's do that, let's do a clone of my addresses table, but using the shallow mode. So and do, um, Create or replace, uh, what are you gonna call it? So it's advancing, and I call this uh, George Cloney. Yeah, 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 it's my clone. Uh, and it's gonna be a shallow clone. Uh, I'm gonna do it off that advancing addresses. Now, big thing is I don't want this to go and live in DBFS, the Databricks file system. I wanna actually see the table. Um, so I wanna give it a location. And I'm gonna copy the location where I should put it. Uh, we have here. So we take that location and I'm gonna call it George. Okay, so what we're expecting, shallow clone, it just takes a copy of the transaction log. Actually, it just creates a new transaction log pointing at those original files. So we should see no data in there and then just a transaction log. So let's see what happens. Didn't like that. 
helps if I actually write table in there rather than just create a replace. Okay, so we're creating a new hive table. So this is kind of a, a twofer in that we're registering the hive table and we're putting it down into this location at the same time we're doing this shadow clone. That seems happy. So nip up data in advancing. I've now got George cloning. It's good. And I can go over here and say, what is happening? I've got my George folder. So I now know I have cloned this table. As expected, I've got no data to bring it because it's a shallow clump. And then I've got a delta log. So I can go and say, what have you done? What's happened in here? So I can see it was added as a result of a clone. That should be up here in my info. What's happening? Somewhere. No, there we go. So operation is clone. Okay, so we know what we're doing. Um, so and then we've got those three files. So it's telling me it's a clone. It's got three files and it's pointing to the old table or the original table. Um, again, because this shallow clone, I'm not cloning the data. I'm just saying, make a new version of transaction log so I can query George Cloney and I'll just point back at those original address tables, which is good. Okay, so let's have a bit of a bit of emergency and see what happens there. So I can go select star from advancing George Cloney. And I should just see my three records and they're the updated version. Okay, so it is at the current state of the table. I could have added something in here saying at time shot, uh, timestamp or at version. Uh, so timestamp and version and then put it back to a historical version and say, before I ran that update, I want to do the clone as of then and point to the original files. This is good, so I can see that that's coming off. And let's just do a little trick to say, I also want to see um, input file name. So that's something you can do in both PySpark or Scala or um, SQL, just to say, tell me where this record is coming from. So I can see all three records are coming from my addresses table, and I've got those three original parquet files. So great, despite the fact I'm pointing at a different directory and pointing at a different transaction log, it's going back and talking to my original data. Is kind of what we expect. So let's do an update, let's change things. Um, so my clone, cannot type this morning. Okay, so I'm gonna update my advancing .George Um I now wanna do a set. Um, what are we gonna do? Let's, let's set the end date. Let's, the end is nigh for our clones. That feels kind of wrong. Okay, um, we're just going to say it's today. So we're ending our George Clooney clones. And there we go, so that's run. So let's do another quick, see what happens in here. Okay, so they've got their new end date, that's been updated. And I can see, so that surprises me. So they're now coming from the George fault. So my shallow clone originally had no data when there's no updates made. If I make an update directly to my shallow clone folder, looks like I get new files in there. Let's go and check that. So again, I can see the fact I've got a new change in here. Mm, yes, okay, so I'm in my clone folder, in my clone's George folder, but I've got new parquet files. So it looks like when I originally saw shallow clone, I kind of assumed that either way, either one you changed, all the data would still be in the original folder, but that's not the case. So any time that you make a change to a shadow clone, the change uh, files appear in this new folder. That's going to be really good for cleaning things up. So if I did this and I wanted to spin off this shadow clone and make some changes and then go, yeah, I don't like it, and just delete it, I can delete that whole folder from the lake, transaction log and files, and my original table hasn't changed. I'd originally thought I'd have to delete transaction log and vacuum and do some weirdness to separate the two once I uh, created that clone. But this is really neat in that you can just go and delete this folder and then it's as if my clone never existed. Again, this sounds so weird, but still. Okay, so that's, that's nice. Um, so let's go back and do it the other way. So let's go and take my original one when I'm setting the effective date. Let's actually set my effective date properly this time. Um, so this is going and updating my original tape. So I've gone in, done an update. So what we should see is nothing happens to George. George is fine, so George hasn't had any changes. We've not had anything, no more transactions, so that's fine. So the shadow clone is completely unaffected by the fact I'm going making changes in my original. And then I've got a load of uh, new changes happening here. So I can see I've got these 1031s going in. So I have had a change in my original table. You can see I've had a new transaction coming in. That should be replacing some files. 
creating some new files. So that's worked exactly as it normally would. Um, but let's just make sure if I select from Twitch cloning. Okay, so that's not had that update. So it is the, fa the very moment I made that shallow clone, they are completely independent tables, despite the fact they share some of the historical files. And now that I've done a full update on that table, nothing in that lab struck judge table is actually going back and looking at the original. This is how kind of they were, they came from the same origin, and now they're off living their different lives. Uh, okay, so shallow clone, really, really cool. That looks pretty effective, looks like it works nicely. One of the other big questions we had is if I do a deep clone, does that take all my history over? So if we're looking at our original table, that advancing addresses, there's actually only three, yeah, only three files active currently. Uh, so let's take that same query. Let's do my select start from, uh, from our original table and just see what that is. So if I copy all of it. Oh, no, it's George Glenn again. Let's go from addresses. And let's just see what's in there. Okay, so I've got three current records coming from three current files. That's fairly straightforward. So I've only got three active files that I'm worried about in terms of my original table. However, I've got a load of parquet files in there. So a lot of that, because I've done some updates over the table, they are no longer current in terms of the current state of the Delta table. So they're used for the time travel and history and that kind of thing, and I could vacuum them up. But it's interesting to say, what's gonna happen if I do a deep clone? So let's be lazy, let's just copy this syntax over and go, okay, right, so we need advancing, uh, we need a clone. So let's uh, call it Palpatine, spoilers. Um, put that down, that's gonna be a deep clone this time. And then this is gonna go into Pulps. Okay, so we're going off, we're taking our original table, we're doing a deep clone of it. So unlike the shallow clone, where we only actually expected to see a transaction log, say, pointing back at the original files, but no data until we start updating, until we start changing it. The deep clone, we're expecting we should actually see some data in here. Just going palps, and I've got my three files. Okay, so that is a big, big message in that it's not copying over any of the history. It's just taking the current state of that table, or at least the state that I queried from. Again, I could do deep clone as of, give it a read version or give it a timestamp, and then take just the active file as of that point. So it's good, and I've got my data log, and again, I should have that. So it's no longer pointing at the old files. It's not, I've not got this. So actually, yeah, it's just a uh, relative local path. It's saying, here are my new Parquet files. It's not saying, here's my address going back to that other uh, folder where I did my shallow. So I can see I've got my clone in there. And I think we have a shallow equals tree. There you go. So you've got, you have that as part of your operation is shallow. So my other one, it was true because I did a shallow clone. This is not true because I did a deep clone. I've got the full data set. And again, now it's just a completely independent Delta table. So I can go and do updates to it. I can do all the same kind of stuff. So I can say, update my table. So let's just copy that in. Uh, what do you want to change in our Delta table? Let's just change the current uh, to false. Okay, making the change. Again, if we just do a quick select from that, we should again see that it is just coming from its current table. There's no link back to the original one now. Okay, and yes, so everything is in that clones palps folder with that new update. And we should see, we've got normal, we've done an update, and so we've got a transaction log change. And we've got a new set of those three parquet. So that kind of makes sense to me in terms of how that clone's working, how the shallow clone differs from the deep clone and actually the ways of working. I'm pleasantly surprised by the way shallow clone works in that you've, the original, as soon as you clone it, it's got all these pointers back to that original directory. But the moment you start updating it, you've just got this separate folder that I've got just the update files, just the updates uh, that were made from it. And I had a few kind of people saying, what's the point? I mean, yeah, I can copy a table, but you know, I could just create a table to select and just create that extra copy of it. And for me, deep clone, it is kind of the same. Sure, I get a bit of a transaction log um, and I can do versioning in there, but I guess I could have in the C test. But the shallow clone has so much potential for saying, okay, we need to change something. I've got 
we could do this new data engineering insert statement in three different ways. Um, there's a bit of a risk with the business logic. I don't know how it's going to affect performance. You know what? I'm going to create a shallow clone, which is metadata, so it takes seconds, milliseconds, just creating that copy of the transaction log, run my update, and it creates all these new updates completely in isolation from my original table. I can try it and go, is that any good? And I can try two different ways, and they're not going to get in the way of each other. Uh, and then we can just go, okay, I don't like that one, I don't like, don't like that one, I do like that one. Um, so I can just delete the ones I don't like, and then they are gone. And that's so clean. Rather than having to write queries and say, oh, okay, so I did that update, undo that update, do another update, undo it, do another update, undo it, and then have to traverse using the timestamps and query patterns to find one that you want to make live, that's going to be really painful. Where it's just the, I want to try lots of different things really quickly without copying the whole table first. It just seems quite nice. It seems quite a nice, neat way of playing around with this stuff. So yeah, pleasantly, pleasantly surprised with how clone hangs together, with how shallow clone works and how effective it is to really quickly just spin up these copies of the tables. So I like it. One of the other things I did know when I was talking about it uh, last week, I think I did mention that I think it's only available in the SQL side of things, but I don't think that's true. So the next day when I went to look at it, I did see it's got all of the um, Python and Scala and other syntax available. So I'm pretty sure that we can actually do it in any of our different languages. And that's quite nice and neat. So that's really cool. Pretty cool. I like it. Um, can I get that up? Would that make sense? Yeah, there we go. So actually, yeah, digging through it. Here we go. So this is just the Python version of it. So similar to merge, when we're not using a data frame and we have to pull up this delta table object, the Python version is working the same. So I need to say delta table dot clone, give it target, is shallow, replace it or not. So it's kind of similar syntax to the one I was using in SQL, but I'm happy that it's available in Python uh, and Scala and Java. Because uh, that just means I can do, if I've got my data engineering workflow and there's part of it that I might want to do as a shallow client to test something, I don't have to register a temp table in Hive and work with it that way and then revert it and undo it. If you're working in SQL and you're testing stuff, you can use it in SQL. If you're working in Python and you're testing stuff out, you can use it in Python. Or Scala or Java, it's up to you. So yeah, very cool. And um, yeah, if you just want to start using it, you want to start seeing how it works, it is on the Databricks Runtime 7.2, which is currently in beta. So it's a don't use in production quite just yet. There might be a few bugs, there might be a few issues. But still, pretty cool. So if you end up using it, and if you are excited to start using it, if you've got more use cases, then get in touch, let me know. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll put some more videos up, and otherwise, I'll catch you next time.